All right, uh, this is, as I previously mentioned, the preliminary hearing calendar for Ju uh, June 23rd, 2020. I'm Judge Richard Brown. And we have those, the two cases and, and the parties are co-defendants and the cases will be uh, heard uh, together jointly with, uh, with the request and no objection from either of the defense attorneys nor the state. So we will go on the record and I will start with the first case on the calendar, which is State of Georgia versus Francis Elizabeth Beth. And there are, one second. As I understand it, she has a total of 11 charges and they are as follows. All right, there are 10 counts of violation of Georgia Controlled Substance Act. And there are warrants 08324, 8332, 8330, 8331, 8333, 8333, 8333, 10 counts of VGCSA, and there's one count of professional use of drug-related objects, 8329. Ms. Vest, represented by Attorney Thomas Florio. Then we go to Mr. Hill. Uh, Mr. Hill appears to have 16 charges. Um, stand by, let me see how many VGCSA so I can summarize. I don't have the uh, bond order in front of me, so I have to go through each page of my calendar. All right, so let me go this way. There are a violation of Georgia Control Substance Act 8302, 8303-8304-8305-8307-8308. 309, 8312-8314, 8319-8320, those are the violation of Georgia Control Substance Act. I lost count of how many, but you have the numbers. In addition to those DGCSA charges, he, uh, Mr. Hill has additional charges of use of possession of drug related objects, 8306. Distracted driving. 8317, possession of marijuana, less than an ounce, 8318, 8318. and um, not having proper driver's license violation, 
8321. Those are the charges for Mr. Hill, who was represented by Defense Attorney Chris Tolles. As previously mentioned, state is represented by Attorney Pleasant, Assistant District Attorney Tiffany Bullwell Pleasant. All parties have announced ready to proceed. I'll ask the state to do so. Yes, Your Honor. Um, state would call Officer uh, Marvin Berry. Officer Berry. Officer Berry. Officer Barry. Officer Barry, can you hear me? Officer Barry. Turn your mic on, Officer Barry. Officer Barry. Miss Pleasant, he's frozen, so that's why he's oh, not. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Having technical difficulties, Judge. Yeah, let me also mention that I'm also on call, so if my phone rings, I'm going to have to answer it. It might be for an electronic warrant, but I will let them know I'll have to call them back. So I apologize if that happened. Okay. Barry? Yes. Okay. Raise your right hand, sir. Do you solemnly swear from the testimony you're about to give in this preliminary hearing should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. Okay. State your name, please, sir. Uh, Officer Marvin Berry. And with what agency are you employed, sir? Uh, Clayton County Police Department. And sir, were you on duty on the 12th day of May of this year? Yes, I was. And were you in the area of Kendrick Road and was Scarlet, Scarlet Lane? Yes. And what county is that located? Um, Clayton County, Georgia. And uh, what brought the defendant to Varus Hill to your attention? We observed him driving a 2015 Mercedes Benz, traveling um, on Kendrick Road. And while he was driving, he was holding his cell phone. Okay. And what time of day was this? Approximately 1249 hours. So he was holding his cell phone. So once you saw that, what happened next? Uh, me and Officer Bowman conducted a traffic stop on the vehicle. Okay. So when you tra and, uh, conducted the traffic stop, what happened uh, uh, during the stop? Uh, Officer Bowman approached on the driver's side and I had approached on the passenger side. Okay. And was there anyone besides um, Tavares Hill in the vehicle? No, just only him. Okay. So once the approach was made, what happened next? Uh, Officer Bowman advised Mr. Hill the reason for the stop. And Mr. Hill said the reason why he had his phone and cell phone, the reason why he had his cell phone in his hand is because he was turning it off. Okay. And uh, was did anything further happen during the stop? Uh, we checked him through dispatch. Well, we, uh, Officer Bowman asked him for his driver license and Mr. Hill advised that he didn't have his license on his person. Okay. Were you able to receive any information to confirm his license status? Yes, uh, Mr. Hill did provide us with his name and date of birth and Officer Bowman checked him on GCIC and he wasn't coming back out of Georgia or Alabama. Did um, Mr. Hill make any statements about Alabama? Uh, no. Well, he said he's he was from Alabama and that his his license is Alabama and not Georgia. Okay. And were you subsequently able to confirm um, whether or not he had a valid license out of the state of Alabama? Yes, we did check him through dispatch and have a couple times dispatch advised that he didn't have a valid driver license out of Alabama. Okay. But we did so, confirm it afterwards that he did, it was a mistake on dispatch saying that he did not have a valid driver license. Okay. So that's the basis for the warrant for him not having a license on his person. Um, well, we asked him, well, after dispatch told us that he didn't have a valid driver license, that's mm -hmm. when we took him out the car and placed him, placed him on an arrest. Okay. 
and uh, what happened to the vehicle subs subsequent to arrest. Uh, K-9 Officer Thomas arrived with his K-9 partner Scooter and they conducted a free air sniff of the vehicle. Was the K-9 officer requested? Yes. Okay. So he conducts a, a free air sniff? Yes. And what if anything happened from that? Uh, K-9 Thomas told us his K-9 officer Scooter gave a positive alert on the vehicle. Was a search of the vehicle conducted? Yes, a search was conducted. And what, if anything, were the results of the search? Approximately five grams of suspected marijuana was found in the glove box. And in the back of the vehicle, there was a backpack that contained 36, well, a total of 37 valves of suspected THC oil and another approximately four grams of suspected marijuana. And $2,870 in U.S. currency. So the money was in the bag with the narcotics? Yes. And they were packaged in, in jello boxes. All packaged in jello boxes. And describe the bag that these narcotics were located in. Uh, it was a black backpack. Okay. I believe. Yes, it was a black backpack. And were you able to field test any of the substances that were located in the vehicle? Yeah, we field tested the suspected TAC oil and it did give us positive results for TAC. Okay. And what about the contents of the glove box? Uh, it was just marijuana in the glove box. Okay, and what's your basis for, what was his appearance? What's your basis of saying it was marijuana? It was a green leaf substance, suspected marijuana. And how was it packaged, sir? It was packing in a clear bag. And the um, four grams that you also located in the backpack, um, how was it packaged? It was in a pill bottle. And um, tell me a little bit about your training knowledge and experience with marijuana. Uh, but I have a lot of training knowledge and experience in marijuana and I'm working, I'm with the Tiger unit based, which is under narcotics. We come in okay. contact with marijuana almost on a daily basis. Okay, and what is your training with marijuana? Uh, I got drug identification class for a 40 hour course at Jip State. Okay, and the contents of the glove box, was that consistent with your training? Yes, ma'am. And then the four grams in the bag, was that also consistent with your training? Yes, ma'am. And was there anything else located in the vehicle? That was it. Okay. Are uh, we able to determine who the vehicle belonged to? Yes, it belongs to Travaris Hill's mother. I believe her name was Rebecca. Rebecca Hill, or yeah, but yeah, it was his mother. Okay. And that. Um, that's all I have at this time. Okay. <clears throat> all right, who'd like to go first? Turn Florio, turn it toes. I'll, I'll go first, Your Honor. All right. <clears throat> Good morning, Officer Barry. Can you hear me, Officer Barry? Did he freeze again? He has.
Okay. Okay, I believe he's back, Mr. Florio. Good morning, Officer Barry. Hey, good morning, Florio. How you doing? This morning? Doing well, sir. Thank you. So I wanted to follow up. You testified previously that the car that Mr. Hill was in was owned by a, a woman or a person named Rebecca Hill. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I think the person was, name was Rebecca. Okay. Um, and during the course, so let me ask you, had you, were you involved with any sort of investigation of either uh, Ms. Bass or Mr. Hill prior to the stop of Mr. Hill's automobile? No. Okay. Were you familiar with Francis Bess prior to the stop of Mr. Hill's automobile? No. Okay. Uh, were you familiar with Mr. Hill prior to the stop of Mr. Hill's automobile? No. Okay. Um, and you're not aware of any investigation by Clayton County Narcotics into either Ms. Bess or Mr. Hill. Is that correct? Besides, I heard Detective Wade and Detective Soberjohn was conducting surveillance on the on the house. Okay, and when did you hear that Soba John and Wade were conducting surveillance on the house? I don't recall. They had they had an open case on it. Okay, and, and did you hear that that Wade and Soba John were conducting surveillance on the house before or after you conducted the traffic stop of Mr. Hill's car? Actually, before. Okay, and do you remember? Uh, and you said a house. What house is that that you referenced? Uh, I think it was. I was. 224 Sedgefield Drive. Okay. And they and the, the conversation that you were a part of with Sopa John and Wade, did that involve Mr. Hill or Ms. Bass? Uh wasn't involved either one. I just overheard them that saying that they was conducting a uh, surveillance on the house for a narcotics complaint. Okay. And have you, on the date that you stopped Mr. Hill's car, did Ms. Bess respond out to the to the, the side of the traffic stop? I believe she did after I left with Mr. Hill to another location to complete paperwork. Okay, so you, uh, have you ever had any conversation with Ms. Bess? No. Okay. Um, have you ever, and you've never conducted any investigation into Ms. Bess, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, you're not prepared to testify that Ms. Beth had any knowledge that there were five grams of marijuana located. I'm sorry, Florio, you was breaking up. I'm sorry. You're not prepared to testify that Ms. Beth possessed the five grams of marijuana located in Mr. Hill's glove box. Is that correct? That's correct. I can't testify to that because she wasn't in the vehicle. Okay, and then that would be the same for the 37 vials of THC oil and the four grams of marijuana in the black backpack. Is that correct? That's correct. Do you have any proof that Ms. Beth had any had any knowledge to, uh, as to that backpack or those vials or the marijuana? No, I have no proof of that. Not to my knowledge. Okay. All right, no further questions, Your Honor. All right, Attorney Toes. Good morning, Officer Bear. How are you doing this morning? I'm all right, Mr. Toes. How are you doing? Long time no see. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, uh, well, here. Um, so you're, you're, you said you were part of the Tiger Unit, correct? Yes, with the sign on the narcotics. Okay. So your your primary function on the Clayton County Police Department is conduct drug investigations, correct? That's correct. And so um, you're not. You're not the type of police officer that's going to be driving down the highways looking at people if they're holding their phones and pulling over people all day for holding their phones, correct? Yes, that is. Yes, we do traffic stops, drug interdiction, and crime suppression. Crime suppression. I'm just saying, generally speaking, that's not something that you normally prioritize yourself with, correct? Yes, it is. If okay. they commit a traffic violation, we pull them over, either give them a citation or give them a warrant. Okay. All right. So um, on this particular day, on May 12th, 2020, um, how long had you been observing? When did you first observe Mr. Tavares in this, um, you said it's black Mercedes? Yes. 
we saw him at um, Highway 138 in Kendrick Road. He was driving up the Kendrick Road, and we conducted a traffic stop on Kendrick Road and Skylark Lane. Okay. And is that, are you saying that's the first time you noticed him? Correct? Is that the first think, time you noticed him? I think he froze again. Mr. Tulsi's he's back. How long had you been watching um, Mr. Hill drive that drive that car? How long how long have you been observing him? Uh, we saw him on 138 going up on Kendrick Road, and we conducted this traffic stop on Kendrick Road and Skylark Lane. I want to say about 30 seconds after we saw him holding the vehicle. When you first approached him, did he have a cell phone in his hand? No, he did not. Not that I recall. So how long had you been following him before you noticed that he had, he had put a cell phone in his hand? Uh, we observed him. He had a cell phone in his hand, like 138 in Kendrick Road. And we conducted this traffic stop like 20 to 30 seconds later afterwards so we could get in a safe place. Okay. And, and this wasn't a random situation. This was a situation where you had received information from other officers to follow this particular car. Yes. Okay. So as far as it relates to Ms. Uh, Mr. Hill driving this black Mercedes, you would agree that this wasn't a random encounter, correct? Yes, it was. So I was over him holding his cell phone in his hand so we could get a proper cause to stop the vehicle. Again, but you had received information on Mr. Hill's car, correct? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. You followed. Mr. Hill's car, correct? Yes. Yes. You were waiting for him to commit any traffic violation, correct? Uh, actually, when I got behind him, I observed him. He had his cell phone in his hand. I understand that, but you were going to pull him over no matter what for something, correct? Objection. It's argumentative. Sustain. Sustained objection. Okay, so so the so the purpose that you pulled him over for was because the the the, um, the drug unit, some other drug officers had told you to follow this vehicle and pull it over, correct? Objection has been asked and answered. Sustained. Well, I don't think they said that they said that he was supposed to pull the car over. That that question has not been asked. Attorney Pleasant. He asked the officer why he pulled the call over. The officer has testified more than once on cross-examination with Mr. Tolles that he pulled the car over because he saw Mr. Hill with a cell phone in his hand. Sustained objection. Officer, when you um, pulled over Mr. Hill, um, did he try to flee? No, he was very nervous, breathing heavily. Did he try to flee? No. 
Did he throw anything out the window? No, he did not. Did he answer your questions? Uh, actually, I, when I read him Miranda, um, he said he did not want to speak without his attorney being present. Initially, when you were conducting an investigation into holding the cell phone, did he answer your questions? Yes. You advise him of the reason for the stop, correct? Yes. And the only purpose, the only, only law that Mr. Hill had, com had made, committed at this time was that he had a cell phone in his hand, correct? That's correct. Did you have any other officers with you? Yes. Did any of these officers have a dog or canine with them? Uh, Officer Bowman, he was with me at the time of the traffic stop, and then Officer K-9 Thomas arrived with his K-9 partner. Okay, so let me, let me be clear. At the time that you pulled over Mr. Hill, was it just your vehicle that had pulled over Mr. Hill? Yes. Okay, how many officers were in your car? Just me and Officer Bowman. Officer Bowman, okay. So you and Officer Bowman both approached the vehicle, correct? Yes. You would agree, um, at this point in time, other than the phone, there's no, there's nothing drug related about this car, correct? That's the reason why you put it over, right? That's correct. Okay. And based so, off his demeanor, his nervous behavior. Right, which is not uncommon for black men pulled over by police, correct? No, it's not common. Yeah. Not common. Okay. Right. So, when uh, Mr. Hill was not able to provide you with a driver's license, correct? Correct. But he said he didn't have it on his person, correct? Correct. But he said he had a valid license, correct? At first he said he had a valid driver's license and then he said he did not have a valid driver's license. Okay. And the way to determine that would be to get his name, date of birth, and run it into your system, correct? You're right, through GCIC. All right. So at this point in time, no license on person, cell phone and nothing about that is drug related correct correct did you call dispatch to see if he had a, a license yeah we checked through our handheld radio and dispatch advised that he did not have a valid driver license out of alabama okay that was what that was the information that you received through dispatch okay but that was erroneous information correct correct on dispatch error. Okay. Because in fact, Mr. Hill did actually have a valid driver's license through Alabama, correct? Correct. He just didn't have the actual physical license. Correct. Okay. And nothing about that is drug related, correct? Correct. Okay. And so at some point in some time at when you were interviewing, uh, investigating this, I guess, cell phone discretion, you could have let him off with a warning, correct? We found after the fact that he had a valid driver license. Okay. After the fact. Mm -hmm. Okay. But um, at even at this point, even with him not having a valid driver's license, um, at that point in time, there had been no reason to call in a canine officer, correct? Yes. That's what we do almost on every traffic stop because we are drug interdiction unit. On every traffic stop? Pretty much. Not on every traffic stop, but a lot of traffic stops that we could uh, that you received information to follow a car and pull it over. Oh, we do it on a daily daily basis. On cars that you've been told to pull over. Or cars that we've been watching. Right. For drugs. Yes. Okay. So the use of the of the of the traffic infraction is merely a ruse to to do a drug investigation. Is that Right. Okay. Yes. All right. And um, just 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 out of curiosity, did you, do you wear body camera? Yes. And it was what what functioning and working that day? Yes, it was. All right. So moving on, how long after? And I guess this will all be verified by your body camera. How long after um, you had stopped Mr. Hill did it take for? Um, another officer to arrive with a canine? Actually so like five minutes. Five minutes. <clears throat> so when the officer got there, how, how now how many cars are investigating a hand and cell phone in hand and no license on person case? How many, how many officers were there when the canine got there? 
our other target units that had respond out there. Other target units. Okay. So how many police officers are on the scene now for this cell phone yeah. in the hand and no license on person case? Approximately five at that time. Five officers? Yes. Okay. Including including yourself and the your officer police. Bowman. Officer Bowman. Okay. All right. We ride two to a vehicle on the tiger unit. Okay. So two two tiger units of two two man teams and one K nine officer. Correct. Okay. Three, three squad. Correct. I'm sorry. What'd you say? Now three three police cars. Correct. Correct. To investigate the license status of Mr. Hill. That's correct. correct. Okay. And so, even without any drug uh, information at this point in time, Officer Bowman begins to take his 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 dog. To do what to what I guess is a free air sniff, correct? Yeah, K nine officer Tom Thomas. Okay, K nine officer. Or, well, when we got Mr. Hill out of the vehicle and he was still extremely nervous, we asked him, "Was there anything illegal in the car, such as drugs, weapons, knives, anything?" And he advised that it was not, and that was it. He also advised you that this was not his car, correct? Mr. Hill did, yes. Okay, um, and that has in fact been verified, correct? Correct. Okay. And uh, he never told you that he had any knowledge of any inf any any anything that might have been in a glove box, correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, didn't tell you about any knowledge about having any seen anything in a trunk, correct? Uh, actually, he did say that the money that was found in the bag was his money for his school, for college. Yes. The money that was found in the bag. Yep. Okay. In the jewel boxes. And I'm sorry, and what kind of box? It was in a jello boxes. Jello box. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh are you saying the money was found in jello boxes? In jello boxes. You like, saying the money? The money. Yeah, money. Two thousand eight hundred and seventy US currency. Okay. And Mr. Hill continue. said that the money was for his school. All right, you may continue. Okay. And that was found in the trunk? Yep. With the same bag where the Suspected TAC in the four grounds of suspected marijuana was found. Okay. At that point, Paul, when he made that statement, had he been read any Miranda? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, but he said he didn't have any knowledge of the drugs, just the money. That's that's correct. Okay. All right. Um, and when you said that the, what what does that even mean when you say the dog hit on the vehicle? I mean, where 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 on the vehicle did this dog allegedly? hit on anything i'm not for sure i'm not a canine officer you have to ask officer canine thomas that okay he would be able to testify to that I mean, were you watching the dog go around the car i was thinking i was particularly looking at mr hill at that time okay so it was officer the canine officer thomas that told you that his dog had hit yes who actually did the search of the car uh officer bowman and I think Officer Thomas helped Officer Bowman search the vehicle. Did you observe them search the car? Yes. Okay. What did you observe? I observed them pull out the black backpack out of the trunk and the uh, suspected TAC canisters was found in the black backpack along with the money. You said TAC oil? TAC vape pans. Car vape pans. You mean like when the Everybody's going to just kind of doing that thing when they're walking down the street. It's kind of puffing on this little. Is that what it? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah. Okay. That's illegal here in Georgia. Yes, it is illegal. Uh, if it's TAC or THC oil. I see. That's a schedule one. That was very dangerous. Schedule one. Um, Other than him saying he owned the money, he did not show any knowledge of anything that was found in anything else that was found in the car, correct? That's correct. And he was arrested for things that he had no, that he told you he had no knowledge of? That's correct. And you based on that just because he was driving that car, correct? That's correct. Near proximity to that, correct? Correct. Did Mr. Um, Hill have any um, 
Did Mr. Hill have any um, drug paraphernalia on his person? No, he did not. Did you find any evidence in his cell phone linking him to any drug deals or sales or anything like that? Uh, the cell phone was taken in evidence. Uh, I I didn't do a search warrant on the cell phone. You probably have to ex detect a way or detect a soda john. Okay. And you stated that uh, someone had arrived on scene later to claim possession of the car? It, from from my knowledge, yes. But I wasn't there. You wasn't there. And you don't know the name of this person? Uh, they told me, I think the officers told me it was his mother because we only could release the car to the register home. It's in our policy. I got you. Um, was Mr. Hill cooperative? Yes, he was. He wasn't being combative. Okay. Did he tell you he was in college or anything like that? Objection to relevance. Um. Uh, just seeing what the conversation was between the officer and my client. The question was, did he tell you he was in college? Is that, yes. is that the question? Yes, it is. Okay, overruled objection. Did he tell you that he was in college? Yes, he did. Okay. Okay. Did he ask any questions about any drugs being at any house? No, I did not. Was he at, asked any questions about where he was coming from? No, I did not. Where he was going to? No. Did anyone else arrive on the scene other than the mother? I'm sorry, Miss Tolio. Uh, I'm sorry. Did anyone else? Did anyone else other than his mother arrive on the scene? Related non non officers, of course. Connections going in and out. Uh, Officer Bear, can you hear me? Yeah, I could hear you. Okay, the question was, did anyone uh, other than his mother, who is not a police officer, arrive on the scene? No. All right, next question. Okay. Um, was um, Mr. Hill taken... Was he released or was he arrested and taken into custody? He was arrested and taken into custody. Do you know if Mr. Hill ever was taken to any home? No. I believe he was taken straight to the Clayton County Jail. Yeah, he was transported to Clayton County Jail. And you did say that at some point you were able to verify his, his license was in Alabama, correct? Correct. And you would agree that that address in Alabama would not be any address in Clayton County, correct? Correct. Did he tell you where he lived? At first, he said he kept saying that he didn't know where he lived, and then we later in our investigation, we it was determined that he lived with his mother at two two four Sedgefield Drive. And how was that determined? Uh, based off the information we received from Detective Wade, saying Miss Beth told them that Mr. Hill lived with her. Stay for how long? She didn't say. Had he changed over any information? Was he receiving any mail there? That I don't recall. Okay. Did Miss Beth say anyone else lived there, including herself? That I wasn't there ask, asking her any questions. Okay. So the only information that you have that Mr. Hill lived at in, a, in an address in Clayton County came from his mother who wasn't able to provide any corroboration of that information. Can you recall, say that again? The only information that you have that Mr. Hill lives at any address in Clayton County came from his mother who has not been able to provide you any corroboration of that information, correct? Objection, correct. that calls for speculation on behalf of this witness. He did not, he's already testified, didn't speak to the mother. As, as it relates to his own personal knowledge of that question. Correct. You said yes, correct. All right, anything else, turn it over. No judge. All right. Um, anything else from this witness? 
Uh, I have a I have one question. Uh, let me ask you, Officer Barry. Yes, sir. Did you ask? Well, you testified that Mr. Hill said the money was in that was in the Jello boxes was his money for college. Is that correct? That's correct. Did you ask him why it was in Jello boxes? No. I see. Okay. Anyone else have any other questions before we? Uh, this officer can be. Um, I do, Judge, just briefly. All right. Um, officer Barry, you uh, testified on cross um, about the defendant's demeanor. Can you explain that, please? What was his demeanor when you encountered him? Yeah, he was beginning to sweat and his chest began to rapidly pump up and down. And he was kind of shaking. He was visibly shaking? Yes. Okay. And do you recall what um, you said you were given information about the vehicle he, Mr. Hill was driving? Is yeah. that correct? Mm -hmm. What information? Who, who gave you the information? Officer Sober John and Detective Wade. I mean, Detective Sober John and Detective Wade. Okay. And what information did they give you, sir? That they observed the, that they observed the vehicle leave 224 Sedgefield Drive. Okay, thank you. All right, anything else of this witness before uh, he not steps down, but uh, we go to the next witness, uh, Attorney Florio. Yeah, yes, sir, just one question, please, Your Honor. Go ahead. I, under, I understood you to say that, that you he visibly, you could see him shaking in his, his chest uh, from heavy breathing? Yes. Okay, and was this recorded on your body cam? Yes, it was. And was your body cam in proper working order on that day? Yes, it was. And has your body cam, is it is it preserved? Is it in a form where it can be obtained by others? By? Will it be, is it something that could be provided to, to counsel for the state or counsel for the defense? Yes. Okay, no further questions, Your Honor. All right, anything else, turn it to us. No judge, not for this week. All right, thank you, Officer Barry. Can this officer be excused? Yes, yes. Judge. Thank you, right. Judge. Thank you, Officer Barry. You can be excused. I'll state next witness. Judge, I just text for Officer Sobajan to, to log back on. All right, we'll stand by. I think he's available. Okay. Officer Sober John? Yes. Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this preliminary hearing? Should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God. I swear. Okay. State your name, please. Detective Sebastian. And um, with what agency are you employed, sir? Blank County Police Department. What division or unit are you assigned to? Narcotics. And how long have you been assigned to that unit? Uh, well, I was on the Tiger unit for a couple of years, um, but now I got detective's position. So I've been in the detective's position for maybe four to five months. Okay. And since you have become a detective, did you conduct surveillance 
on an address located at 224 Sedgefield Drive in the city of Jonesboro. Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, can I just explain it to you from the beginning? Okay. Well, first, a, uh, this, this house that I referenced, what county is it located in? Clayton. Okay. So explain to me from the beginning how this house came into play, please. Okay. So the Detective Wade got a drug complaint for 224 Sedgefield Drive. Um, we ended up, he did surveillance there. We ended up doing a knock or attempting to do a knock and talk on the 12th, I want to say of May. Um, when we arrived for the knock and talk, um, the vehicle that was listed in the complaint, which was a black Mercedes SUV was parked in the driveway. And that vehicle was listed in the complaint, um, was parked in the driveway. We knocked on the door, myself and detective Wade, uh, nobody came to the door. We heard somebody on the inside, but nobody ever came to the door. Um, one of the uh, undercovers stayed back when we left and watched the residents, conducted surveillance on the residents and observed uh, Tavares Hill exit the location with a bag. Uh, he entered the Mercedes vehicle and drove off. Um, the vehicle was trailed. Uh, tiger units were in the area. They obtained probable calls to pull the vehicle over and pulled the vehicle over and they located approximately nine grams of marijuana and approximately 37 THC vials along with 20 or $2,870 uh, in arrested Tavares. Now, when you attempted to conduct the knock and talk, what time of day was that? It was approximately 12 something. If I'm not mistaken, it was around 12-ish, maybe a little bit before, maybe a little bit after. Is this noon? Yes. Daytime? Okay. Yeah. So get a drug complaint. Um, what surveillance, if any, prior to the knock and talk was conducted? Uh, Detective Wade did that surveillance because it was his original complaint. Mm -hmm. um, he did surveillance on three, two or three different occasions, I want to say. Okay. And did he convey anything um, with regards to any drug activity or anything significant to the original complaint? That would be something that you'd have to ask him. I'm not sure. Okay. So the knock and talk is, is uh, unsuccessful. You said the undercover um, advised that they saw, um, who did they see leaving the residence with a bag? Yes, uh, knock talk was conducted. Nobody came to the door. Undercover mm -hmm. stayed back. We left. Uh, they observed Mr. Hill exit the location with a bag, enter the vehicle, drive off. Okay. Were they able to give any description of the bag? I believe it was a black bag, but let me double check. Okay. Uh, a black backpack. That's correct. All right, so the traffic stop is conducted and Correct. how were you, how was the information conveyed to you that um, the nine grams and the 37 vials are located? Uh, we met with Officer Bowman and Officer Barry uh, shortly after the traffic stop. Okay. And I believe they told us on the radio also, I wanna say, I can't okay. remember. So then once you get that information, what do you do with it? Um, we obtain a search warrant for the location and execute the search warrant. Once we executed the search warrant on the location, uh, we recover, well, we seized approximately one digital scale, $880 cash, uh, approximately 16 grams of psychedelic mushrooms, two grams of MDMA, 668 grams of marijuana, 40 THC vials, the same THC vials uh, that were located on the traffic stop with Mr. Hill, approximately 23 alprazolam pills, approximately 53 oxycodone pills, approximately eight fentermine pills, which is a controlled substance, approximately 37 grams of moon rocks. Uh, oh, approximately, what are moon rocks, sir? They are, they're pretty much uh, marijuana dipped in THC, so it's more potent than marijuana. 
Okay. And you said 37 um, of those? 37 grams, uh, okay. approximately an ounce of promethazine, uh, approximately 43.94 pounds of THC edibles, approximately 5,017 grams of THC butter, and approximately 71.5 pounds of THC food, approximately eight THC tablets. And then we also located 174 grams of unknown pills that uh, were sent to the GBI for testing along with everything else. Okay. And where were these drugs located in this residence? Uh, throughout the house, um, just different rooms, mainly in the kitchen and in a, uh, I guess like a loft area or it was the room next to the kitchen, uh, mainly in there, but most of it was scattered throughout the house. Okay. Were there, um, were you able to determine who resides at that residence? Yes. Um, so we spoke, so Mrs. Bess comes into play because she actually responded to the traffic stop to get uh, the Mercedes vehicle, I believe. Okay. I'm not 100% sure if she, that, that was what she went for, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was for. Um, so, let's see. So, we spoke to Mrs. Bess, and uh, she stated, uh, well, let me start with, uh, we got detectives identified her room as there were bank cards located in her room with her name on it and just things with her name on it. Um, we also located women's clothing associated with Bess in that room. Uh, Bess was interviewed and uh, read her Miranda rights and uh, decided to speak without an attorney present. Bess stated that her son, uh, yeah, so she went to pick the vehicle up. Uh, uh, okay, she said that her son lives at 224 Sedgefield Drive. Judge, um, I'm, I'm, currently, Judge, I'm, I'm gonna pose an objection. All right, what's your objection? Unless this officer can say that he's the one that did an interview, then he can't testify to this part of the case. That would be hearsay. I mean, it would not even be hearsay at this point in time. Um, hearsay is permitted if he was in a room and he heard it himself. But that I haven't heard that. I heard an interview was conducted and things were said. But that's not, that's not, he has, he, he's not laid a foundation to bringing this evidence forth at this point in time. So I'm going to object based on um, lack of personal knowledge um, at this point in time. Attorney Pleasant. Uh, Counselor right. Tolls is fully aware, Your Honor, that hearsay is permissible um, for probable cause hearings. Um, this detective was a part of the investigation into this case, he relied upon information from Officer Barry and from Detective Wade in conducting this investigation as it was, um, they were all part, part and parcel of the investigation. Hearsay is permissible. That's the thing, Judge, hearsay. In other words, if he heard someone, if he heard Ms. Best say that, that's hearsay. Not just it's in a police report file or something else that someone else did, that's not hearsay. That's just somebody, I mean, you know, Ms. Ms. Pleasant could get in there and testify if that's the case. So he doesn't have he doesn't have personal knowledge and he doesn't have a basis to be making these statements about what people said because it's not right. that's not hearsay. I uh, overrule the objection. Collective knowledge is allowed and hearsay is allowed. Uh, officer, you may continue. Yes, sir. Um, so uh, best yes, Mrs. Best stated Judge, that. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Of the evidence. I didn't hear you. For the weight of the evidence to be considered by this court, I think it's important to understand where this information is coming from and how he's... The court understands it and it has ruled. Uh, overrule, your, uh, uh, overrule your objection. Officer, you may continue. Please don't interrupt. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, so Mrs. Best stated that uh, her son had been staying at 224 Sedgefield Drive and that it was their, both of their former residences. She also stated that uh, she still had a room at the location and that for the last day or so they had been staying with their mother uh, she had been staying with her mother at off Kendrick's at States Drive she didn't specify an address and she also said that uh, 224 Sedgefield Drive uh, was being used as an Airbnb location 
but she did state that she uh, stayed at the loc or had a room at the location and that her son was staying at the location and that she was staying at her mother's house. All right, uh, Very pleasant. Next question. And the room that you identified um, as belonging to Ms. Bess, were there any um, illegal substances located in that room? Uh, let's see. I don't believe so. Okay. Did Ms. Best make any statements about who owned all of the um, drugs that you previously testified to? No, not that I recall. Does she claim ownership of anything in that residence? Any uh, of the legal substances in the residence? Not that I recall, no. Did she say anything about her son with regards to the um, substances that were located? Not that I recall. And were you able to determine um, how many bedrooms are in this residence? I want to say there were three, but again, I, I, I don't recall, but I want to say there was three. Okay. And um, were any clothing or anything that is attributed to um, Tavares Hill located in any of the bed other two bedrooms? Um, I honestly, I don't recall. I know we found miscellaneous mail with her name on it um, and debit cards and credit cards with her name on them and clothing, female clothing, but I can't remember if they found uh, male clothing. Uh, I don't recall. Okay. And so who was the subject of the search warrant? Was there an individual person that was subject of the search warrant? Um, well, at, at this point it would be, uh, it was both, um, since they were both staying at the lo location and uh, Mr. Tavares was seen leaving the location. No, also, the question is in obtaining the search warrant, was there a person identified to be the subject? Oh yes, uh, Mrs. Bass. Is this residence in her name? I, I'm not sure. Do you know why she was the subject of the search warrant? Uh, yes, she was actually listed in the complaint, in the original drug complaint that came in. From, a, from an anonymous caller? Correct. Okay. And you've taken out warrants for um, on the THC is possession with intent. What's the basis of that warrant, sir? Uh, well, there were there was there was more THC than one would use for personal use. Uh, there was a lot of vials at the location and also located in the vehicle that came from the location. And the warrant for possession with intent to distribute marijuana. What's the basis of that? Uh, there again, the same thing. There were a total of there was a total of six hundred and sixty-eight grams of marijuana uh, located. And um, were there any um, items for packaging or distributing drugs that were located in the residence? E let's see. Yes. What, what was located, sir? Um, let's see. Um, there were uh, food savers at the location, uh, which consist of sealing uh, the marijuana in a vacuum sealed bags. Um, I'm not sure if we actually took the uh, package and material that was located. There was, yes, okay. So there were two vacuum sealing machines, 
Uh, they were located in the utility room. Uh, and I believe there was actually packaging material, but I'm not sure if we actually took that. Okay. There was also a pill press located. What's a pill press? Uh, it's what you use to uh, form the shape of a pill. And label it and stuff. Okay. And you testified um, to edibles? Correct. How many grams of THC edibles were located? There was 71.5 pounds of THC food, 5,017 grams of THC butter, and 43.94 pounds of THC edibles, uh, like sweet treats and stuff like that. Okay. And none of that is legal to possess in the state of Georgia. Correct. And the food was located where? In the kitchen and in that uh, little loft room to the side of the kitchen, next to the kitchen. The butter was located where? In the kitchen. And were, were any of these drugs field tested? Uh, yes. Okay, what was field tested, sir? Um, the THC. What were the results? A positive. Okay, what else? Uh, the methamphetamine positive. And I believe on scene that was it, the everything else was sent to the G GBI, excuse me. Okay, so what's the basis of saying that there were oxycodone pills located in the residence? Or I'm sorry, it was the MDMA. Um, what was that question? What was the basis of saying that there were oxycodone pills in the residence? Uh, the pills have a label on them. And you, if you look them up on pill identifier, it tells you exactly what pill it is. Uh, it shows pictures of the pill and it tells you, uh, you know, the side effects, what it does to you, what it's prescribed, if it's a controlled substance, what schedule it is. And all that. Okay. Same thing for the that... lamb. Okay. So pill identifier was used to identify these, these two drugs. Correct. Okay. And the mushrooms, what is it? Were those field tested? No, those were sent to the GBI. Okay, so what's the basis of, of stating that they are mushrooms? Just uh, knowledge and experience. And which, what is your training, knowledge, and experience consist of regarding drug identification? I'm sorry, repeat that. What's your training, knowledge, and experience with regards to drug identification? Uh, just my time in narcotics and on the Tiger unit. Okay. What training did you receive when you were in the narcotics unit? Just field training as far as being out and seeing it for myself. Okay. And the um, promethazine, was that uh, a liquid substance? That is a liquid substance. Was that field tested? I don't remember, but again, it was all sent to the GBI. The phenamine, okay, the war ending in 8303. The phentermine? Yes. Uh, the same thing, pill identifier. Okay. And uh, was any of the marijuana field tested? No. Okay, what's the basis for stating that it was marijuana? Uh, same knowledge and experience. What was its appearance, sir? What's what? How did it appear? It was a green leafy material. Did it have a distinctive odor? It did. It smelled like raw marijuana. Okay. And this is based on your experience in the field? Correct. And all of this was located um, at the Sedgefield Drive address? Correct. And located in Clayton County? Correct. Thank you. That's all I have at this time. Prophet Zam, turn to Florio. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Detective. Good morning. All right. So let's go back. I understood you to say that there was some, some sort of an anonymous tip. Who was that uh, anonymous tip made to? Who received that tip? 
uh, the Clayton County Narcotics Unit. Okay, and do you know if there was a particular person, yourself or another detective that actually received that tip? Uh, detective Wade received that tip. Okay, and what was that tip? What, what, was, what was said? What was the context of that tip? And just for the record, the detective Soba John, what is it that you're reviewing? Uh, my uh, investigative summary. Okay, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Um, it was a anonymous tip, um, and it just said that uh, it describes Miss Bess, and it said that she sold edible uh, marijuana pills and made deliveries in her vehicle. And that's when her vehicle information was given as well. Okay, and so let's go back. Did it actually say the name of Francis Best or did it identify a female? It identified Francis Best and this vehicle uh, with the tag. What type of vehicle was that? Or it was that? a 2015 Mercedes-Benz or Mercedes-Benz GLK350, the SUV. Is that the same SUV that Mr. Hill was stopped in? That is correct. Okay. Do you know how that anonymous tip was made? If it was in person, over the phone, email? Uh, it came through Crime Stoppers. Okay. During the course of uh, who, whose case is this? Is this your case? Is it Detective Wade's case? Who is the main case agent on this case? Well, Detective Wade is training me, so technically it's his. I'm just taking over it. Gotcha. And so during the course of y'all's investigation, I understood you to say that there was surveillance conducted on the house. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Detective Wade uh, conducted surveillance at the location. And were you with Detective Wade when he conducted that surveillance? I was not. Are you aware of whether or not anyone was with Detective Wade when he conducted I believe he was alone. Okay. Are you familiar with whether or not that surveillance was audio or video recorded or if there are pictures, photographs of that surveillance? I don't know. Okay. You've not seen any photographs from his surveillance. Is that correct? Uh, I'll double check. Mm. No. Okay. And you've not seen any videos of his surveillance. Is that correct? No video, but uh, yeah, no video, no, no pictures that I okay. see. Are you aware as to whether or not during his, his two or three days worth of surveillance of the residence, if he actually ever saw, saw Ms. Beth, lay, laid eyes on Ms. Beth? I'm not sure. Okay. Are you aware as to whether or not a, uh, can you hear me detect, can you hear me detective? I can hear you now. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, there we go. I apologize. My oh, it's okay. Ear um, are you aware as to whether or not, um, Strike that. During the course of Detective Wade's investigation, did he tell you as to whether or not there was a trash pull conducted of this resident? I am not sure. Not that okay. I know of. Okay. Are you aware as to whether or not there were any controlled buys made of this resident? I don't believe so. Are you aware as to whether or not there were any whisper stops? Um, or, or independent traffic stops made of automobiles leaving this residence? Uh, just the, uh, just Mr. Hill leaving the residence on the day of the knock and talk. But other than that, I don't think so. Okay. And there was a knock and talk conducted. Who, who actually conducted that knock and talk? Well, we attempted to conduct the knock and talk, but nobody came to the door. It was myself and Detective Wade. And I understood you to say that you heard uh, heard some sort of talking inside the house. Is that correct? You can hear noise inside the house. Um, it wasn't talking. It was just uh, noise being made inside the house. 
Okay. And at some point thereafter, who observed Mr. Hill leave the residence? Who made that uh, observation? Lieutenant Arroyo. Okay. And I understood you to say that Mr. Hill was carrying a black backpack. Is that correct? As he left the residence, yes, sir. Okay. Um, were you there at the traffic stop when Ms. Bess arrived? Um, at I the was traffic not. Stop in her Okay. When was the first time you made contact with Ms. Bess? Um, at the uh, search warrant, upon the execution of the search warrant at the location. Okay. Are you aware as to how Ms. Bess got to the traffic stop? Uh, I, I don't know. Okay. Are you aware as to what happened with Ms. Bess's automobile? Uh, don't, you talking about the Mercedes? No, no, no. The, the car that she drove to the, to the, where her son was stopped. Oh, I, I have no idea. Okay. Are you aware as to whether or not that automobile was ever seen at this Sedgefield or Sedgefield, what is the address? Sedgefield the, Drive. Yes, sir. Are you aware as to whether or not the automobile that Ms. Best was driving was ever seen at that location? I am not aware. Okay. <clears throat> there was, are you aware as to when the last time was Ms. Best was located inside of that, inside of that house? Uh, from what she said, it was from what she said, she had been staying at her mother's house uh, for a day or two. So I'm assuming before that, a couple of days before that. Do you have any evidence as to when any, and I won't go through every single one, but do you have any evidence as to when any of those narcotics were placed in that house? I, I don't know. And do you have any knowledge as to by whom those narcotics were placed in that house? Who put them in there? No, sir. Okay. What proof do you have that Ms. Bess knew that those narcotics were located inside of that house? Uh, well, she stated she had a room at the location. And if you have a room at the location and are staying at the location, and uh, I mean, you, you would see all that stuff. It's, it was Most of it was in plain view. Okay. What proof do you have that the narcotics were not put there after Ms. Bess last left the home? I, I don't know. Okay. And you'd agree with me that the bedroom that you identified as Ms. Bess's bedroom had absolutely no drugs in it. Is that correct? I don't know if it didn't have any drugs in it, but most of the drugs were located in the kitchen and in that loft room next to the kitchen where the refrigerator well, now, was. And now you remember testifying on direct that there were no drugs located in Ms. Bess's room. Is that correct? I stated I believed there were not, but I'm not 100% sure because I didn't do the searching. Okay, who did the searching? Uh, the entire narcotics unit. And what were you doing during I the was, searching? I was uh, collecting evidence and doing the paperwork for the evidence and bagging the evidence. And where were you collecting the evidence from? In the kitchen. I was in the kitchen. Okay, so you were a part of the crowd that was doing the searching. Is that correct? I, I was not searching. I, what they do is they search and when they find something, they bring it to me and I bag it and write it down on the evidence sheet. And when you bagged it, did you bag anything that somebody said, hey, this came out of Francis's, Francis Bess's bedroom? Again, I don't recall. Okay. And you'd agree with me that when items are located, what's located and where they're located from is all notated. Is that correct? Uh, it is. And you'd agree with me that there's an, an evidence sheet, a carbon copy evidence sheet, which is left at the location. Is that correct? There is. And I'm looking for my copy now so I can give you a confirmed answer to your question. Thank you. No problem. All right, let's move on. And if you find, let us know, Attorney Fleury, I'll give you a chance to come back. Okay. Thank you, sir. Any more questions, Attorney Florio? Just one second, please, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Florio, I actually found the uh, evidence sheet. Um, yes, sir. And there were five plastic bags filled with marijuana, approximately 30 grams, located in the master bedroom, uh, which is which was the room that was identified as Ms. Bess's room. Um, along with miscellaneous mail with Mrs. Bess's name on it. And that was the room where all the female clothing and all the stuff with Mrs. Bess's name was located on, if I'm not mistaken. So yes, there were drugs found in Mrs. Bess's room. 
So aside from the approximately one ounce of marijuana located in her in the bedroom that you identified as hers, there are no other drugs located in that bedroom. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And no one brought you you do, no one brought you any drugs that they said, "Hey, I just found these drugs in Ms. Bess's automobile." Is that correct? Well, the automobiles weren't there at the time of the execution of the search warrant. The only automobile that was there was the Mercedes and it was driven by Mr. Hill. Okay. The automobile which she which Ms. Best drove on that day, are you aware as to whether or not there were any narcotics located in that automobile? I don't believe so. Okay. And would you, are you aware as to whether or not any narcotics were located on Ms. Best's person or in her purse or any of her personal effects? I don't believe so. And no large sums of money or anything like that located on Ms. Bess's person or in her purse or anything of that nature. Is that correct? That's correct. Nothing that I'm aware of. Okay. Okay. Anything else? No, sir, Your Honor. All right. Turn it toes, cross them down. Yes, um, officer. Um, what was the date and time of the... Um, anonymous tip that came in suggesting it was December 12th of 2019 or December 10th of 2019 I'm sorry December 10th of 2019 okay and this case particular case occurred on May 12th 2020 correct that is correct so between December and May are you, are you aware of any surveillance on the home? Uh, like I said, Mr. Or Detective Wade was the, it was his original case. So he would have been the one that initiated everything. I understand. And what was the date and time that you did your knock and talk? Uh, May 12th at, I believe it was right at midday, maybe a little bit before, maybe a little bit after around 12-ish in the afternoon. And you went to a Detective Wade? That is correct. No one answered the door? No one answered the door. What did you do after you, no one answered the door? Where did you go? We left the location. Left the location. Okay. Um, and But somebody was, a Lieutenant or Arroyo was observing the location? Correct. Okay. Um, and, and is at that time that Lieutenant Roy, Arroyo uh, told you that... Mr. Hill had come out of the location? Uh, yes, he advises that Mr. Hill exited the location with a black bag and entered the Mercedes SUV that was parked in the driveway and drove off and he trailed. Okay. And that's when you told the Tiger unit to pull over his car? I didn't tell the Tiger unit to pull the car over. They obtained their own probable cause and pulled the vehicle over. What exactly did you tell them about the car? I'm sorry? What did you tell them about the car? I didn't tell them anything physically. But you alerted them that this car was possibly involved in a, at a drug location, correct? They were alerted, yes. I didn't alert them personally. Okay. And how long after you had alerted Tiger Unit did my client get pulled over? Okay, again, I didn't alert the Tiger Unit, and I couldn't tell you exactly. Well, how long? Who did alert the Tiger Unit? I believe it was Lieutenant Arroyo. Okay. How long after Lieutenant Arroyo notified the Tiger unit did my client get pulled over? I don't know exactly. But you stated that you went there about midday, correct? Yes. Okay. A little bit before, a little bit after, I'm not sure, but it was around midday. You personally did not see Mr. Hill leave any house with any anything, correct? I personally did not know. Okay. And you never went to the actual scene of this traffic stop? No, I was never on the traffic stop, no. What about Lieutenant Arroyo? Did he go to the traffic stop? I'm not sure. This um, house was linked to Ms. Bess, is that correct? Uh, you broke up, what's that? This, this, link, this house is linked to Ms. Bass, correct? Correct. 
correct. And that dates back all the way back to the anonymous tip back in December of 2019, correct? No, that is correct. Okay. Her car was outside the location, correct? It was parked in the driveway, yes, sir. Her bank cards and mail were found in the location, correct? In the master bedroom, yes. Women's clothes were found in the location, correct? Yes. She admitted to having gone to been in that location, correct? Yes. She said she, uh, for the past couple of days, she had been staying with her mother, but she said she still had a room at the location. Okay. Um, was she seen that day at the house? Mm, I didn't physically see her at the house, no. Did you interview Ms. Best yourself? No. Where does her mother live? I'm sorry? Where does the mother live? Uh, she stated that her mother lives off of Kendrick Estates Drive, which is close to Sedgefield. Is that also close to where Mr. Hill was pulled over? I believe so. I'm not 100% I'm not sure. Was any search done at the uh, mother's house? No. It was confirmed that Mr. Hill had an Alabama driver's license, correct? I wasn't on the traffic stop, I don't know. Have you ever come in contact with Mr. Hill yourself? No. You know what he looks like? Yes. How do you know what he looks like? Uh, I have a picture of his mugshot. But never and seen it, him personally, correct? What's that? Never seen him personally, correct? Uh, no, except for that day, no. Just for that day. Okay. Where did Lieutenant Arroyo go after he allegedly saw my client leave the home? Where did he do? I'm not sure. Did he follow the car as well? He trailed the vehicle, yes. Okay. Is he part of this Tiger unit? No. He's not? No. Okay. So at that point in time, when he left the location, was there anyone else watching this house? I'm not sure. I know he was. But, it, but he left the house to follow my client, correct? He trailed your client, yes. Okay. When did what date and time was the search done? The search warrant? Yes. Search warrant was executed at approximately 1450 hours, which would be 250 in the afternoon. So the search warrant was executed the same day? Yes. Okay. But from the time that um, my client left the house and the search warrant, there was no surveillance on the house, correct? I'm not sure. Do we know where Ms. Bess was during this time? Uh, she wasn't, uh, I believe she wasn't at the location. I'm not 100% sure if somebody stayed and watched the location while we obtained the search warrant, but I'm pretty sure they did. I just couldn't tell you who. Okay. So at this point in time, you can't tell me what, what Ms. Bess did after my client was pulled over, correct? Uh, no, sir, I can't. Okay. And you can't tell me who was at that house for the two hours that it took to get that search warrant, correct? No, the only person that was seen exiting the location was Mr. Uh, Hill. Okay, who was not the target judge, of the investigation. Judge, correct? if I may, if I may, Judge, I don't know where my client is. She's no longer appearing on the on the video feed. I think they're sitting down. As long as she, okay, as long as no, no, as long as she can hear, that's okay. I All just right. wanted to make sure she was still present. If, okay, thank you. Yeah, yes. that's fine. Yeah, I just please, you've been to make standing sure the a job long time. Was. Oh, that's fine. You can sit okay. down as long as you can hear. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Thank oh, you. No, thank you for checking. I apologize. No problem. You may continue, Attorney Toll. This is Mr. Hill, who was not mentioned in the anonymous tip, correct? Mr. Hill was not in the anonymous tip, no. Okay. Was not the target of the investigation initially, correct? 
Uh, you broke up on the first part. I couldn't hear what you said. Was not the target of the investigation, correct? Mr. Hill was not up until he got pulled over coming from the location. Okay. Um, has never been seen in the room with Ms. Best or in any common areas, correct? I, I don't know. Okay. Um, no um, mail was found in the name of Mr. Hill at the location, correct? I'm not sure. I don't think so. And the car that he was driving also belonged to Ms. Best, correct? That's correct. Whose mother lived a short distance? Uh, I know it's off Kendrick Estates Drive, which is approximately a five or ten minute drive, maybe, if that. Um, and um, when a que you, you said, did you did you are, do you have any um, information about the questioning of Mr. Hill? In other words, did any officers tell you what he said about his knowledge of what was going on at the house or at the? I believe he he asked for a lawyer, so he wasn't spoken to. Okay. okay. All right. But um, Ms. Bess, um, who stated that she had ownership or at least some type of part ownership, um, maybe through a lease or someone was doing some type of Airbnb? Yeah, she stated that um, she had been staying at her mom's off Kendrick Estates for the past couple days. Uh, she still had a room at the location. Uh, her son was uh, staying at the location and that uh, the location was being used as an Airbnb. Correct. Okay, now you weren't there during the interview with Ms. Best, correct? I was not. Okay. Is it any possibility when she said was staying at the location that she could have been referring to her mother's house? I'm not sure. I wasn't there. Okay. But she stated that she wasn't even living at the house at that time, correct? She stated that she had a room at the location, okay. but she had been uh, sleeping at her mother's house or staying with her mother for the past couple of days. Right. So if she was sleeping at her mother's house. Is it possible that she said that her son was also sleeping at her mother's house at the location. Jackson, it calls for speculation. Is it possible? Response. Well, if he's if it's if it's a speculation that um, he's speculating that he might have been talking about the, the mother's house and not the incident location, then it would also have to be speculation that playing at the location is also speculative that they meant the, the drug house as well. Okay. So I don't I don't think it's speculation if um, he has information um, of where Mr. Um, Hill was staying. The objection is to is it possible that's a sustained objection. All right. That's all I have, Judge. All right, Attorney Pleasant. Any yeah. other questions? No, Judge. Attorney Florio. No, Your Honor. All right. Can this officer be excused? Yes, please. Yes, Judge. All right. Thank you all. all uh, you thank can, you, Your Honor. Thank you. Be safe. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Any other witnesses or evidence from the state? No, Your Honor. State, Russ. All right. Any witnesses or evidence on behalf of Ms. Best, Attorney Florio? None on behalf of Ms. Best, Your Honor. All right. Any evidence or witnesses on behalf of Mr. Hill, Attorney Toes? No evidence or witnesses, no judge. Evidence closed. Argument. State waves opening. Defense. Turn the toes. I'm sorry, turn Florio would let you go first. <clears throat> yes, Judge. Judge, I, I uh, it, when we focus on the evidence that's been presented, what you see is an anonymous tip from December. So you, we've got an anonymous tip from December. And then from December to the date that this occurs, there's absolutely no corroboration of it. There's no, no testimony that they saw him as best at the house, no testimony of trash pulls, no testimony of knock and talks prior, no testimony of whisper stops, nothing, nothing. No testimony that they saw her, that they saw her car, nothing. We fast forward to this day, there's an allegation of, of the black Mercedes SUV in the driveway, allegation that uh, Mr. Hill leaves the house carrying a bag that he stopped that a search is conducted, that there are narcotics located in his SUV, 
the narcotics that are located in his SUV match the narcotics that are located in the house. There's testimony as, a, as to a bedroom in the house that they attribute to Ms. Bess. The bedroom merely has 30 grams of marijuana. In it. So we would submit on possession of marijuana more than an ounce. I certainly think there's enough probable cause and the state's met their burden on that. But then any, was there narcotics found in Ms. Bess's automobile? Not that I'm aware of. Narcotics found in Ms. Bess's person or her, or her purse? No. Large sums of money? No. Um, when were the drugs put there? I don't know. Who put the drugs there? I don't know. Any proof that those drugs were there when Ms. Bess was in the house? No. Ms. Bess stated that she hadn't been staying in the house. Is there any proof that the drugs were not put in the house after Ms. Bess last stayed at the house? I don't know. I mean, there's no proof of anything. There's no proof of anything. There's an anonymous tip six months ago, and that's it. Independent of the anonymous tip, if that anonymous tip's not made, then there's no, then her name's not on the search warrant. There's nothing. And for an anonymous tip to ha having been made, and then there to be no corroboration of it, I think it makes us certainly look with speculation upon this allegation of the anonymous tip. Um, so for those reasons, Judge, we would submit on possession of marijuana more than an ounce. If he testifies that there are 30 grams found in the bedroom and he can he can identify that as her bedroom, then I understand. I think the state's met their burden. But as to all the other drugs in the house, we would ask that those warrants be dismissed against us. Thank you. Thank you. Attorney Toes, on behalf of Mr. Hill. Yes, Judge. Um, on behalf of Mr. Hill, um, there is scant evidence at best um, that he's linked to anything at this house other than some officer who didn't testify claiming that my officer, my client came out of the house with a bag that purportedly contained um, vials of THC oil, um, four grams of marijuana in a pill bottle, a pill bottle that had a green and colored gel inside of it um, that, that is not linked in any way to, um, the mushrooms, moon rocks, hydrochloride pills, digital scales, um, none, none of, none at all, none of that was found in this particular bag. So I respectively disagree that quote unquote stuff matched um, the stuff that was in the backpack matched stuff at the house. Um, there were some, there was some similarities to some of the things, but, um, but not, not to um, uh, crispy edibles and um, those types of things. And when you consider that it's not illegal to be having a backpack, you know, with your own whatever marijuana. Um, it doesn't assume we can't just assume that just because he came from a house that he does not own, that he does not run out from Airbnb, that there's no male clothing in it to indicate that he lived there, no mail going there, no nothing any no identification whatsoever identifying Mr. Hill as have anything to do with this house that has been clearly linked to Ms. Bess as she was the um the target of the investigation the person that they went to go talk to in a knock and talk the person that was identified in the anonymous tip whose car was seen outside of the location there's no evidence judge that my client had anything to do with any oxycodone pills or anything you know such as that in the house so as far as probable cause is concerned he was seen merely coming out of the house with a backpack with a backpack okay if the court wants to find probable cause for those things um i think that would not be unreasonable considering the, this case even though I, that came in from different officers but to then assume that he's responsible for everything in that house judge that's not his with no proof that he was living there with a you know with it doesn't make sense that my client that that miss best would say my client was living there but she wasn't living there and she and he doesn't even have any clothes that's that doesn't even make any sense and miss best was living at her mother's house um it, it just it the the evidence judge just doesn't match up 
and the the statement of a co-defendant against another co-defendant judge, um, I mean, without any type of corroboration of that, that uh, he was living there, judge, it's just, I mean, it, it doesn't hold any weight. So what I would ask the court to consider is that, but for my client on May 12th, coming out of a house with a bag, there would be no evidence against him linking him to that house or linking him any type of, any type of um, drug deals. Um, maybe this stuff is in the backpack, but not the stuff in the house. So um, based on the evidence judge um, that was presented here uh, today, it would be mere speculation, um, especially considering um, common areas. And we don't know who, it, it was a very, very quick investigation judge. Remember that, the, the, that, they, that they get a tip in December, but they show up in May, they do a knock and talk and they, they pull, you know, we understand, I mean, I, I could argue that this is an illegal stop. This is a, you know, this is highly unusual and pretextual judge just to be, I mean, my client was going to get pulled over for some, any, anyone that was driving that car that day was going to get pulled over. Um, but, you, but to say again, that he, he had possession of, of anything in that house judge, that's, that's, that's a stretch too far. And considering that my client does not have any record or any links to this house, I'm going to ask the court to dismiss any and all drugs that were located in the house because um, mere proximity is not evident is not in and of itself evidence um in the backpack you know I, I think there may be some evidence there but not anything else that's what i would uh that would be my argument to the court thank you i hear from the state an anonymous tip in December, giving the first and last name of Miss Bess, as well as a description and license of her vehicle, um, stating that she is dealing um, in uh, THC. The testimony by Detective Sobajan was that um, Detective Wade, on two or three different occasions, um, conducted surveillance. Um, they attempted a knock and talk on May 12th. No one would come to the door despite um, hearing noises in the home. They leave and leave an undercover who sees Hill leave the residence with a black backpack and drive away in the 2015 Mercedes Benz, which has previously been attributed to his mother. Um, he uses his cell phone, they pull him over the backpack contains money and THC vials that Detective Sobajan testified was consistent with what was found in the residence. Also marijuana in the glove box and as well as in the bag. In addition to the uh, 2870 that's located in um, jello boxes inside the same backpack that the defendant Hill was observed um, carrying when he was leaving the residence. There is certainly, um, as Sobajan testified, the narcotics were um, primarily in the kitchen and loft area, visible, not in any way um, attempt at being hidden. There was um, over an ounce of marijuana in the master bedroom that contained um, Bess's information, credit cards, uh, mail, and women's clothing. She stated that her son lived at that residence. He's observed leaving that residence and driving away in a vehicle. So based upon the totality of the evidence before this court and the testimony um, by Detective Sobajan, I'd ask that all charges be bound over against both defendants. All right, after considering the evidence in this case, the court pretty much adopts the argument and highlights those things that were uh, recognized and given consideration by the state uh, to find that there's sufficient evidence to establish probable cause for bound over all charges on both parties. Uh, the court will add that if I take the argument of the defense, uh, there's no evidence that it, no one else was even living in that residence. There's no evidence that was brought forth today that anybody else had been in the residence. Uh, the, only two people connected to the residents are the two defendants who are mother and son. Um, 
this is uh, some of the arguments made uh, will be better served for the trier of fact and the uh, standard of proof would be beyond reasonable doubt. This morning is probable cause. The court finds that there is sufficient probable cause based on the totality of the evidence and the circumstances surrounding the time, the place, the money, the house, and these parties, uh, not to mention the anonymous tip, which pretty much was confirmed from the subsequent investigation. Uh, so for all those reasons, the court will bind up all charges on both parties that will conclude the hearing on these two individuals who can go back with the deputy. Unless there's anything else that will conclude these two cases and this session of court. Anything else from the state? Nothing from the state, Judge. Attorney Florio. Uh, not, not regarding this matter, but on a, an unrelated matter at the court's convenience. Attorney Tolles. Thank you, Judge. Um, earlier, uh, we had some conversations, and I did get I did get the message from Ms. Floria, I mean Ms. Fulware. But now that the court has had an opportunity to listen to evidence, and I understand, you know, prob there's a difference between probable cause and 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 all that. But, but after listening to the evidence of my clients, very limited connection um, to this particular um, and him having no record, would the court reconsider its you know its bond position? Um, so that my client can have an opportunity to bond out so we can go to college based on a very limited, I mean, there's not, there's just nothing out before May 12th, Lincoln, Mr. Um, there's, no, there's nothing linking him to having any kind of money to, to have that kind of access to that kind of, that level of drug activity. Um, there's just nothing there. So I'm just asking the court after now that it's heard all the evidence, would it, you know, consider its bond position? All right, stand by. Deputy Crawley. Perhaps you're seeking to find out if uh, you can, if everything is completed with the uh, two individuals. As far as I know, uh, they were finished and um, we're finished. And we thank you for your help through the sheriff's office. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay. Uh, now let's go to Attorney Pleasant, response to Attorney Toad regarding bond. Um, no, Judge, he was asking you um, if you would deviate from the 75000 that you previously um, stated you would be at, grant in this case for Mr. Hill. What's based state, on what's testimony. The position, what's the state's position on whether it's still in, uh, whether it's still inclined to do a bond less than 75000 Yes, Judge. Okay. All right. Um, to be quite honest, the more, I've, the, more uh, the fact that I've heard this is really aggravation or so the mitigation, but, but given the fact that he has no prior history and the state is not opposed, I mean, would even go lower, I would do no lower than 75 what I originally offered especially since I've heard evidence that there's more aggravation uh, that normally I would, it would be more than 75 after having the hearing. So uh, yeah, that that would be the least that the court would get or would go, especially like I've already mentioned, other cases were a lot less. Uh, we're talking about 16 charges and the circumstances around this case, to be quite honest, is not, it doesn't appear to the court that this is a um, young person trying to move on with his life in college. It doesn't appear that way. Okay. So, well, then, Judge, we'll, then we'll just, uh, at the appropriate time, we'll file a formal bond motion so uh, more evidence can be heard before whoever won the bond that day, I guess. That might make a difference if you can uh, show him in that light. All right, then that concludes uh, everything with attorney tolls. Uh, the bond will remain the same, which is no bond on uh, Mr. Hill. Thank you, attorney tolls. Mr. Attorney Florio, anything else? Yeah, judge, but on an, uh, another case, not a case on this morning's All right. calendar. All right, the bond remains the same on uh, Ms. Bess as well. That will complete this calendar. 
for the uh, two preliminary hearings. Uh, if you want to, um, do we need to go off of the YouTube and off of the Zoom or on the phone? Which What's the preference? Oh, just off of YouTube, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the calendar for the magistrate court for this morning, the two preliminary hearings. So, signing off on the YouTube. Stand by.